There we go. Cool. Hey, I'm Jonathan Burke Cohen. Uh, so my talk tonight is called Deconstructing Networks. This kind of has to do with projects I've been working on the last few years that look at kind of how we can play with networks, the relationship we have with them, and challenge that use. So to start off, I wanted to start off with this quote because I think it's a really interesting uh, way of kind of looking at networks. So it says, time-traveling Victorians arriving in the late 20th century would no doubt be unimpressed by the internet. They would surely find space flight and routine intercontinental air travel far more impressive technological achievements than our much trepidant global communications network. Right? And what he's talking about here is this contrast you have between the left side, which would be a typical telecraft office, where you have a fixed infrastructure, specified location, and network-dependent connectivity. On the right, you have a phenomenon we saw, we saw called bluejacking. And, and the difference there is that basically walking around with your phones, you are connecting over Bluetooth to stores. This one's sending a message. And the difference there is you have a mobile infrastructure now. Location doesn't matter anymore, right? And device, devices kind of dictate the, the connectivity between things. So you don't actually have a fixed network. You're kind of moving around space. So my work kind of fits in between those sort of areas of, of um, kind of network connectivity. So looking at subverting network context, I'm going to talk about a project that had to do with um, looking at network consequence, what happens when you add a physical consequence to visiting a network, social subversion when you change a structural shift of a network, a physical display, how do you represent data in physical space, wireless freedom and control, and also engaging with mobile devices. So the first project I want to talk about is called Crank the Web. This is a hand crank that I made that actually lets you download a website by hand. So you actually enter the site and you download it. So it's looking at kind of how transparent processes can be materialized. You know, will the automation equation, will the future edge us out, and what can this kind of teach us about new technology? The second project is called Alerting Infrastructure. It's a jackhammer that destroys a building based on how many websites that, um, web hits that uh, building's website gets. So it's kind of looking at how a website relates to the physical space represents. I've installed this in a few countries around the world now, and it's interesting to see kind of the combination. Looking at physical displays, I did this project called Police State, and it's a network of 20 remote control police cars that are all responding to terrorist keywords that are snoops on a local network, and they drive around in kind of configurations based on what keywords it finds. And it's looking at kind of reappropriation of information also, in looking at social subversion, I did this project called Bumpless, and Bumpless is an email community for the determined. It only supports six people. When you join it, you bump somebody. So you have to be part of it. You have to keep joining it over and over again. So you guys can try it at bumpless.net. But it looks like kind of look at when you change the rules of a, something, a system like that. And I worked on this other project called Thwonk, and Thwonk is a way of kind of authoring a system like Bumpless. So it was kind of a model. It's kind of messed up in this, but basically it's kind of the version is you're sitting around a table and when you get in, when somebody gets in, they bump somebody else up. But it's looking at kind of rules and how you can exist. So moving on from there, I've also done projects in wireless. So this is a picture of a public park. You have all these Wi-Fi signals, red beacons going on in the park, and they're all conflicting with each other, right? So all these signals, you've seen them when you open up your laptop, you get hundreds of signals. So this is becoming a problem with some community groups whose networks are being shut down by corporations. So I built a project called Wi-Fi Hog that basically was this device you stick onto a laptop and it allows you to go into a network and only use the network and then jam every other signal besides your signal. So it allows you to have third party control just from like your own laptop. And it's looking at kind of what the acceptable policy is. And then also looking at wireless freedom, I built an open source toolkit called Wi-Fi Liberator that basically allows you to use those kind of networks that are closed in like airports and whatnot and then basically kind of be like Robin Hood you kind of take the network, the access, and you give it for free to other people. So it's kind of looking at redistribution. And the way it works is up at the top, you have people that are paid, and then with the Wi-Fi Liberator kit, you actually become the node, and people connect to you rather than uh, you them all paying for it. So it basically frees up all these closed networks that are in public spaces. And it's kind of meant to really challenge how we relate to Wi-Fi in public space. I've also done work um, on sort of mobile phones, and this is a, a performance project I did called Simple Text that kind of looks at how we can use mobile devices in a collaborative way rather than individual, and how you can kind of share uh, an experience by sending a text message and then generating a live audiovisual performance. And then the guy who I worked on with that, um, we kind of came up with this idea with inquisitive devices, which basically this these set of birdhouses that kind of sniff for uh, Bluetooth devices. And if they find your ID, they start talking to you. They kind of said questions and questions sort of like talking out, you know, basically about kind of what you are. Moving on from there, I've done a lot of hacking projects with like physical things, and this is a collaboration I did with Catherine Moriwaki called the Super Soaker Car Organ. <laughs> it's a little different. Um, basically, it's these squirt guns you shoot at the side of an old Forerunner vehicle, and it it generates sound based on when you're shooting water guns at it. But we do these workshops called Scrapyard Challenge, where we kind of go around the world and we um, we create um, instruments, interactive objects out of junk and found materials. And uh, Catherine does it for me, and basically you kind of 
challenge the way that we look at objects and kind of think of new interfaces from that. And so far we've done the workshops in, um, since 2003, we've done the workshops 32 times, 14 countries, five continents um, all over the place. There's a map there that kind of shows some of the, the things, but you can go on our site and see videos of what people have made, and it's a really interesting way of kind of learning about all the trash economies of these places, because it's so different the way you come across garbage. So anyway, thank you. That's it for me. And more on my website too, so.